Hi YouTubers, Roxanne here from Roxas Cards and Crafts and in this tutorial number 14 I'm bringing you, uh, this is sort of like a part two, the first one I did which was episode number 36 if you follow me I show you how to do this same card with a die uh, but the purpose of that particular uh, lesson was to show you how to take a photo of it or take a photo of anything I was just using that card as an example and you're bringing it into design space and that way you can put words that you want around your uh, so your Cricut will put words around anything like the birthday here but with this one today I'm going to actually show you how to design this card so the first one, as I said, I used a die for the happy. This one, we're going to completely cut the whole thing. And if you want me to be really completely honest, doing it on a cutting machine is much faster than doing it with a die, in my opinion. So let's get on to it. So step one, let's make the topper. Go to your shapes, select the square, uncheck your aspect ratio or your padlock up the top. Your width will be 5.75, this is a landscape view, and your height will be 3.75. The base I will be making with my paper trimmer and the base measurements for my cards are 4 by 6 in this case 6 by 4 so then I want you to duplicate this one is going to be white and that's the one with the writing on it with the with the birthday so while that's highlighted, come over to where it says the square, where it's blue, right click, and we're going to rename that topper white, and then press enter. Click on your second one. We're going to give that another color, doesn't matter which one it is. Let's go orange, and then over here, we're going to rename this Topper 2 and we'll go Pattern. So this will be your pattern. Step 2, we're going to make the happy word. Now this happy is an image from Design Space so you will need access. So you go to Images and we're going to put in M4563435A or you could probably just put in happy. But for you know for being fast M456 and do you think I can remember it 3435 capital A there we go we're going to press search and that will come up so we're going to select that ah it's saying it's a dollar 49 for those that don't have access. I shouldn't have to pay for that because it's got the green A up there, which means that I'm a member, I've got a subscription. All right, but if you don't have a subscription, it will cost you $1.49. However, don't forget that you can go on to places like Creative Fabrica and the like, say, defont.com and try and select a font that has the tail swishes. So I'm going to, I've already added that to canvas, but I'll add that to canvas. And it does look a bit different. I think I've already manipulated that one. Yeah, so I've made it, so I've made it skinnier. So what, what you can see the difference there is, why I've made this skinnier. Now, these innards, on the P, I want them to be bigger. 
and I'm going to show you how to do that and I like it to be thinner like uh, the die that I use is quite nice and the machine can handle it being cut thin so I'm going to take these down here so I can show you what to do so what you want to do first is just duplicate a copy in case we need to use that and then we're just going to make this uh, larger so that it can be seen right. now at the moment if I highlighted this and went to contour the innards is what I'm looking for so these we, we want to have all these innards so what I'm concerned about is how this touches the P. Um, it's not a great deal you can do about making it thinner. If you do make it thinner, what will happen there? That's not the one. I'll just go out. Let's have a look at this one. It's been made thinner, all right, but what happens here is that will be cut with white. So I'm all right with it being thin, but for the purposes of this, I'm going to leave it at this thickness. And then if you want to do it thinner, which in my opinion looks nicer, you can do this, but you just won't get the colours or the pattern paper when it's... So when I cut that happy out of the coloured or pattern paper, I make it so that the innards are cut into the pattern paper. You just won't get the pattern paper for that one. So you'll get it for the Y, the inner piece. So they've got to be closed. All right, but that's open. So you can close that if you want, which is, again, quite easy to do if you grab a shape. There are, there are things that you can do all the time in design space, not as quick as, say, if you were using Inkscape but still a way around it so if you made that shape now you muck around with this yourself i'm not going to worry too much about this shape here because it really will be a pain but if i was doing this in inkscape all i have to do is move the nodes over to the p much easier but because I'm trying to teach you to do this in design space that does not have the capabilities of manipulating nodes, um, you can muck around with adding a shape if you want, just putting it there and then joining it, to, joining them together. Oops. Just for the purpose of making it smaller really just for the sake of um dear idea you know filling that gap <clears throat> i hope that makes sense so i'm going to leave this happy at this size but what i want to do is make the p innards bigger it's very easy while it's highlighted so go up to your layers panel and select go to contour and this might surprise you a bit but what I want you to do is hide all layers now when you hide all layers you still get left with the outline but I want to get rid of that in a minute and all I want is one of those innards and then you can click on that 
close that up and then all you've got is a single dot. I'm going to go into that. Make that bigger so we can see it, okay? For this happy, I'm going to just get rid of this. That was just to show you and I don't want you to be confused. I'm getting rid of that. So all I should have on here now is that in P which belongs to one of those okay and the happy all right so everything else I don't want you to worry about for now I'm going to just make this bigger I'm going to contour and this time I all I want is to hide those two innards in the P this will eventually make sense. I'm going to select this innard and just change the color to anything but black. Not yellow because the background's yellow. Let's go orange. Now this is a bit big. So just reduce that size. Find this arrow bring to the front, arrange, bring to front and manipulate this, so just do one at a time. Now you can use your keyboard arrows to go up and down and just put it where you feel it would look good. So re keeping in mind that this is at nearly 300 zoomed in, 300%. When you go down to 100, all of this is going to be thin, so just make sure that the lines around there are still at a proportionate look. So I'm going to make a duplicate, a duplicate of that and put it on the other P, about there. Hopefully that will look nice. So we're going to zoom out. So that's what happens when you don't use your layers panel. So you can't see it when you grab it. So I was going to do that. Um, but sometimes you grab the wrong thing. So anyway, I've grabbed it for now. Or you come over to here and you select your innard, the second innard, and your happy. And then we're going to do combine and exclude. So yes, of course you can do slice. But exclude gives you, there's, exclude is in a few other programs and it's a lot less messy and you're not left with three different things to go in and delete. So I'm going to reduce the size. You want to sit at about 100%. Alright. But the happy's still big, so even if you put it really small, you've still got nice innards for the card. So that's that bit. So your next step, now that you've got your happy sorted, is to turn, turn the happy, we're going to set it going this way, and we're going to make sure that the the tail so the tail goes over the car because we want that to completely cut out now it looks nice if it's nice and big so it's cut off that way and cut off at this end. So 
so just keep trying to maybe position it where you think you would like it so this is actually going to be up here the top left portion is going to be the patterned paper so you might want a lot more pattern paper uh, so you put it where you like I like it to show a little bit of pattern paper but I don't want it taking over the entire topper but I also want it to be nice nice and big so I like that it's sort of in the middle Just leave it like that all right now what you're going to do is select you want to get these both together so select the yellow one shift key and your white topper which is underneath and we're going to align them to center Then you'll select the happy and the yellow, which is the pattern paper. So hit the shift key, pattern paper, and then hit slice. We'll do slice this time. So what that's done is it's sliced off the tail bits so you can delete them. So we'll go up the top. So we can get rid of those, just delete them. And I like looking at them. That's the original which I would like to keep. And then we've got that one which we don't need. And nothing was touched on the white. Now let's just go back a few steps to keep that white like that and I'm going to put this really should have just left that there but I just wanted to show you what it was made up of I'm just going to line that up again I'll use my arrows so that looks pretty good now I'm going to turn this happy to a white that's the so we're gonna rename this white happy or well, that's our happy and that's the one that's going to cut out on white paper now with the pattern paper you can see it's changed the name but because we've got a different color well, we can rename it again if you want let's just see how that goes pattern paper so what I want to do is select the pattern paper and we're going to contour and I want to get rid of the the bottom bit but it, it should let me so you can see that it's disappeared so that all that's left is the pattern paper with the innards so that's all your machine will cut out now so all that's left to do so if I take that away and take that away you're still left with the white topper and what you have to do on the white topper is the writing so just back up those two moves and we'll leave those there I mean you can group them for now so they don't move and then what you have to do is do the text under there now I show you how to do the text in in my video number 30 36 so number 36 is using your Cricut to write anywhere on your card front after using a die so in that particular tutorial that I showed you was using a die this is using the machine 
So you can go on there. I'll put it exactly where it is on that video so you can just go and look at that. So I'll come back and I'll just do a bit of a, um, a text without really telling you how to do it. So I've gone ahead and selected a font in step four. This font has to be a writing font. This was a font I used was DTC Fluffy Socks. Okay, so then I went before I ungrouped it or separated the words, I used the, I used all these at my disposal first. So I curved it and I used the line spacing and then curved it a bit more. I made it go smaller, put it around the Y and you'll fuss around with it a little bit. It's quite easy to do. Then what we need to do is I need to ungroup these guys. So I'm going to ungroup those. Then I need to go to attach for the word birthday. I need to select attach, scroll down, hit my shift key and then hit the top of white. And then we're going to attach the writing to the card. So that will write. I don't like it over here now. It used to tell you what was writing and whatnot, but even over here it's got multiple. So you can go to the attach over here and it tell, tells you that it's pen. And if you hit the white topper, it will show you that it's a basic cut. And that, ah, uh, that did that. Did you see that? I moved it. And that's because, I'll just go back a few. And that's because I should have clicked off and moved it all together. So now you have three pieces. So that is going to cut with that. So you can make this so that you're getting the most, see how it goes like that. You can move it. So that's straight up and down, push it in or move it under here. So you're using less cardstock. So that's now going to write. So it will write first. So make sure your pen is in your clamp A. And then you're happy. So that's two bits done. And then you pull out your mat, change your mat to the pattern paper cut that and then I'll come back and show you how I put it together. Okay, so I'm going to try and do this for you as quickly as I can. So these are the three things that have been uh, cut. So two mats. This I did just by scraping my oxide inks over a bit of cardstock and it comes out really nice, I love it. So I'm using something that I already had done, whether you've got alcohol inks, plain pattern paper, whatever. This is what cuts out only. Then you're happy and then the birthday is written on the card. Now rather than this is, um, believe me, I've done a few of these. Rather than pick this up and stick this down and then put that in and then put those in there, what I found is better is to flip this over and we're going to make everything fit before we glue it down because when you glue something like this down, these pieces may not fit and you will get gaps. So in order to do that, while it was cutting, I just did a, f a, few, little, a few little sticky tape bits. You can do it as you go. This is my way and this is the way I have found that it works. Now I'm putting this on my mat. However, try and put on maybe on something that isn't going to stick and make the work hard for you. 
Can you see that all right? I'm just going to turn this to where I can see it. Okay. And all I'm going to do, let's just start with one of them. Butt them up as close to together as you can. Like I said, every time I go and do a video, this is what happens. Miss Fumble Fingers comes out to haunt me. It's not going to wear used tweezers because my fingernails are too long. So I'm just going to use any sort of sticky tape. This is, I've used the pink one so you can see what I'm doing. Well, let's just see if I can't. So butt in as close as you can. It looks much better with the final outcome. those nails because they do dint rocks so keep doing this and then I'll come back okay so I've just gone ahead and finished doing that now I'm doing the the innards so I've turned that over this one's going to go first that in there and just go and get some tape stick that down and it pops in much nicer it's like they belong as I said I've done a few I'll just keep talking while I do this I, I have done a few where I've stuck it on first and yeah, let the glue dry and they don't fit. And this 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 way is a guaranteed success. It's a sure thing. And then gluing it on is fast. Now this is a design that only has doesn't have much. I'm gonna turn that around. Oopsie. There's not much to this design. There's some designs. Are a lot more fiddly. Just leave that there. What will I do? This one. That end. In. It's like it doesn't want to fit. Don't think I've got anything stopping it. Yeah, I might glue that one in on the other side.
once that part was stuck there, I could muck around with it. But have a look at that. The nice close up. Oops, sorry. Now, all I need to do is put this onto the, sorry, card topper. And this happy is not going to be inlaid so the the top half is inlaid all right but the bottom half is not now i did do one where i did cut away on here as well and inlaid it but i didn't like the look of it the happy actually looks better if it's inlaid at the top but not at the bottom and gluing now that you've done all this, is much easier as well. There's no, you can go straight over the, I, sorry, straight over the innards, and I make sure that they are still properly glued. So the edges, so I'm using glitter glue here with a fine point tip. And I will never stray from using these fine tips, not when I do intricate cuts like this. I also like this glue. It gives you a bit of time for wiggle room, but not much. So marry up the top corner, marry up the bottom corner let that go and hopefully that all falls into place we don't want to see any white from this card the edges to match edges are matching the birthday is in the right place and then just tap it down gently appears okay make sure the edges are And I do it gently down here so the glue doesn't spurt out. I've got a bit of tape shining through there, but I can get rid of that later. If any glue comes out, just quickly, you know, deal with it. So this is your topper. So a topper is always something that goes on your card base. So I'm going to glue this just around the edges, really. I'm using the same white cardstock for my card base that I used here. I just love this dimpled paper. This is Kayser Craft. Oh, told me on the back there. CD601 white, and it's the premium. And I love working with it. It just, I'd prefer that you did this design um, on something that's textured doesn't have to be uh, rather than smooth the smooth tends to bring out a lot more of the impurities in the cuts um, I've also done an intricate cut for me I've got my own setting and it's foolproof fail proof I should say and I back my pressure off and cut it two to three times and I've done that for years you see a lot of people that say the card won't cut. Well, back your pressure off and cut more than once. Okay, make sure your cardstock is stuck nicely to your mat uh, by using a brayer. Make sure your mat is sticky. If your mat is not sticky, restick it. Is there shouldn't be any reason why your cardstock needs to drag. And if you are having problems, come and let me know. I'll definitely help you out. All right. That's it, guys. You do have to put this in. So I get my ATG gun. And I line that up. 
All my cards get an insert. And I bring them in one eighth in from when they open it and then I just push that down. There's your finished card. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.